Hello, welcome back to Pearl Adventure. This is our first session after the icebreaker. In this session, we're going to talk about roles, teams, and ideas, the different roles that are there in a company based on the various functions like building the products, marketing them, the finance aspects, selling, and then the different roles and titles that are typically used in companies, some of which you may already know. Why is it important? What are they really encompassing? And, and why and what kind of work does each role actually play? Um, in this session, we'll also talk about teams and how to form teams, teaming, what are the different aspects of forming the right team, um, importance of it, and why it plays a vital role in the success of a company, and how we are able to make those introductions and have the right kind of relationship with the team members. Last but not the least, in this session, we'll also talk about ideating. This will be start of the journey. You know, once you understand what's in a company, the various roles, how you're going to form teams, the next big thing is, hey, what am I going to do in this uh, ideation? What kind of products am I going to build? And thinking about how to brainstorm as well as picking the right ideas for the product. With that, let's get started. Now, before we get into uh, um, you know the nuts and bolts of the team's roles and, and the ideation, there are some simple terminologies and I want to make sure that all of us are on the same page, have a very simple understanding of these words that we will use a lot through this program. What does entrepreneurship really mean? Entrepreneurship is all about running a business. It's running a company, doing business, building products and making profits out of it. That's what entrepreneurship is all about in a very simple way. And that's a good enough understanding to have at this point. Who is an entrepreneur? Entrepreneur is an individual or the person who is actually running that business or running that company. It's he or she who, she who runs the company. In some cases, there will be an individual who will run the entire entrepreneurship. In some of the cases, there will be multiple founders or co-founders that form together to become entrepreneurs. The core set of people who actually run the company are all viewed as entrepreneurs. So when you form teams and build your products in the Pella Venture sessions, you are all entrepreneurs. There is no difference there because you become one of the co-founders of the companies that you start. And then the other two big differences is who is an employer and who is an employee. An employee employer is the one who owns the company, runs the company, and has many people that work in the company. So that's an employer. An employee is a person who works for a company and gets a paycheck or a wage for working in that company. And he or she becomes an employee. So there is a difference between an entrepreneur who most of the time is also an employer and will also work in the company and may draw a salary, but there may be other individuals who are simply employees. They are not the founders or the entrepreneurs, but they are also uh, workers in the company who build the product. So these are just general terminology. Uh, we will use this in the session, but we are not going to use these specific words to identify somebody in the team. As you form teams, you will all become entrepreneurs. So we are not going to differentiate between an employee and an employer. But part of being in this program in Pella Venture and starting your own company is to also give you an experience or a flavor of how to be an entrepreneur, or in other words, how to become an employer rather than just being an employee. Okay, all right, with that, let's get going. So companies, we keep talking about companies. What do companies really do? At a very simple level, companies build products. They market the product that they build, they sell them and they make money. And the money they, they make out of it is used to pay the salaries for the people who work in the company, as well as becomes the profit that they will use to build further products, other products down the road. You don't just build a product once, sell it, shut the shop and go. You have to come the next day, the next month, the next year. So the companies are in this loop of building products, marketing them, selling them, and making money, and again going back to building products. And then the company keeps rolling and they will grow. Sometimes they may start with building one or two products. As they make more profits, as they get more money made out of it, they may build five products. They may employ or hire and have more employees. They may start with 
a small group of people who work for them and as they build more and more products the employee base grows so a company is nothing but one that is in a business of building a product marketing them selling them and making money and if you look at it, building a products what does it mean it is knowing what to build how many to build how time bound you want to build it in a specific time because that's what is important for you to be able to sell it and then the quality of the product so building a product is not a simple thing it is very involved because you know you should know what to build how many to build and building it in a time bound manner and ensuring that the quality of the product is good when you build it there is also aspects of meeting the customers you want to understand what to build and then eventually you want to sell it to the customers so the customers don't come at the very end only when you have built the product sometimes and most times you will engage with the customer early enough for you to also understand what to build and how many to build because you have to build products that are sellable you can't just think that every product that you build you can sell so you engage with customers at the beginning sometime in the middle and of course at the end when you sell so you meet with customers you also want to market what you build when you say market you want to advertise and you've seen advertisements on television on newspapers on social media advertisements are important because people should know that you have a product people should know that you built something only then they will come in to buy so they are not going to magically show up when you're ready to sell it you should have prepared your customers make them wait and then when you're ready you give it uh, to the customers and and that's part of marketing so a lot of time marketing also goes hand in hand with advertising and sometimes companies advertise a product after they have built sometimes they advertise it slightly before so that they start to build that market or that need and uh, uh, kind of that uh, waiting for the interest for the people to wait and want to buy the product so there are different techniques of how you market and how you advertise in what kind of mediums you use sometimes people make brochures posters social media is a big thing sometimes they push videos and then get teasers so that the people get interested so marketing is a big part selling a product is 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 a very important aspect it means how do i reach make sure that the product reaches the customer you can't sit in your house or in your company and say come and buy it sometimes a person would want very far away to want to buy this product but may not be able to reach where the product is so you have to figure out how to make sure that the product reaches the very end to the customer and of course part of selling also means knowing how many to sell and then being able to get the money for the product sold and then bringing the money back into the company so that you can run the company right you can do the profit and loss build more products so selling is about taking the product to the customer being able to sell and being able to get the money and then bringing it back to the company so it's also a full loop and then the last part is also very important how do you manage the money so any company when they start they need a capital or a small initial amount for them to go build the products about an idea that they have and then for building they may have to have raw materials and let's forget about giving wages or salary to people who are building for now but that is another expense also but you also need expenses to build the product and then the last one is once i have you have to make sure that you put the right right price for the product how do you come up with the right price and then after you have put the price and you have sold bringing the money back so managing funds and money is an integral part of the company it starts from the starting capital or the money that i have to using that money to buy raw materials to build my product then also using that money to build doing marketing and advertising then you sell the product you bring the money back and then find a way to put it back into the company to build additional products so managing the money is again a big function so this is in a nutshell trying to tell you what companies really do right companies have various aspects to it now let's get into the different roles in a company now that you know what companies do in a very simplistic way what are the various functions let's look at various roles in a company it's an open discussion i want you all to think maybe take a piece of paper write down the various roles you have heard in a company you know you may have your parents or you may have walked into a company or a shop to buy something you may have gone into a bank 
uh, you may have gone into a store, uh, you may have gone into a movie theater, or you may have gone into a, um, a particular, um, you know, automobile shop to buy a vehicle of sorts. So there are various interactions that you may have had directly, this is just going into a shop. You go to a school, you pay fees. That's another uh, entrepreneurship. School is also an entrepreneurship, a company that runs it. So you had, as an individual, as a student, various interactions with companies either directly or indirectly. Think about what the different roles you've heard. You may have read it in a paper, in a magazine, whatever, right? What are the, or in watched in a movie. What are the different roles in a company? Just whatever it comes to your mind, write it down in a piece of paper. I'll give you a, a minute or two for you to think about. And when you write the role, identify with what you've heard people call that role as, right? What do they what do they call that role in a company? And write it down. Whatever comes to your mind. There are many roles. Um, and whatever comes to your mind, just write it down. And there is no perfect answer. In fact, this is a learning experience for all of us. And maybe you can put it on the chat window if you want, if this is a live session, if it's being streamed. And maybe uh, a, a note for, for teachers is to also to be able to engage the students in a live session to have uh, students raise their hand and call out what roles they have heard in a company. Okay, if you've written it down, let's keep going with this. So you've all heard of a CEO, right? You may have parents or relatives who is the CEO of a company, or you've heard of famous CEOs, personalities, right? Bill Gates, you know, Tim Cook, Steve Jobs, um, Elon Musk, uh, Ratan Tata, uh, you know, there's so many names, Adani, um, uh, Reliance Industries has got uh, Ambani, Mukesh Ambani, and so you, you've heard of these names, they are CEOs, Chief Executive Officer, that's what CEO stands for. You may not have heard of this one, if you've done, that's awesome. There is also another role called Chief Operating Officer. Um, so chief executive officer is like the head of the company and there is a COO, chief operating officer. So they run the company in terms of the various functions that are there, the ones that we saw in the previous slide about building the product, buying the raw materials, um, marketing it, selling it. These are all various functions. The operating officer oversees all of these to make sure they're all working uh, uh, you know, in the right time, having the right skills. Chief Financial Officer, CFO. Um, you may have heard of this also. So we talked about managing the money. The CFO is very important function because Chief Financial Officer is the one who ensures that there is a right profit and loss maintained in the company. Because if you keep making loss, you won't be able to build products. You won't be able to give salaries to the employees. And if you keep making loss, you will eventually have to shut down the company. But if you keep making profits, then you need to know also how to man manage the profits. Are you going to keep hiring more employees? Are you going to build more products? Or is it going to get stagnant? Um, is there going to be a growth in the company? And if so, how much can you give more money to build more products? The chief financial officer constantly thinks about those functions. And then we talked about marketing officers, uh, marketing as a role. Some companies also have chief marketing officers. They constantly think about, hey, how do I bring the right advertisement, right brochure, right social media and different geographies maybe in the city it works differently in the rural area it works differently different languages needed to market the product and the marketing is also about age groups demographics is this for children is this for adults is this for senior citizen is it for women is it for men there are many aspects of the product um, um, that that the marketing uh, uh, role thinks of so there's marketing is another big role sales and another big role i've talked to you about that how to sell or to bring the money back and of course you have employees employees that are doing these functions they may not be the chief financial officer but of chief financial officer may have many accountants um, the chief operating office officer who's who's also in charge of building the product may have many skilled workers to build the product sometimes it could be engineers sometimes it could be some other capability uh, artists it could be depending on what product you're building, right? If you're running a, let's say a nursery, then you need employees who know, understand soils and plants and how to pot them and understands the botanical aspects of it. So they are skilled workers. So they are, they are employees. So employees are there for all of these functions. So these are some of the different roles in a company. 
and these roles are obviously essential for building the product meeting customers before you build something and once you're ready to sell managing the money what is your budget what is your expense and then um, market the products and sell it so um, we kind of in the last two slides went through what are the various roles in the company uh, what does a company do and then what are the different functions this is putting it all together right these are the different roles in a company of course uh, at the very end uh, you also want to make sure when you manage the money how you make the money and give salary to the individuals we've talked about it and enough build more products once you make enough product uh, profit out of it which is called the growth of a company because like i said always a company exists not in one snapshot in time company exists for a period of time if a company builds a product and they let's say build 50 of it after they sell the 50 they don't come back oh we made profit let's distribute the money and sell and go off that's not a company that's just doing something recreational if you're a company you sold the 50 not after you sold the 50 50 but even before you should think and anticipate and build 50 more or maybe you don't see the demand so much so you build only 30 more or you see a huge demand so you build 200 more I'm just giving those as examples then you start to see hey i sold this 50 of the same product but I found the customers want something similar but a different variety of it. So you start another variety of products. So the whole idea of company is to get the cycle going in a manner that you're always making profits and you're growing. And that's what is important because that's when the company grows. So it's important to understand these various roles, how they tie together and how they make the company like a clock that keeps going on and on around the clock year after year, you know, building products, making money. And then we'll talk about other things about you know shareholders and others it's not important in this particular session that we have on parallel venture this is all about understanding the basics of entrepreneurship okay all right so very simple this is more of a quiz or a summary ceo is the head of the company chief executive officer cfo keeps track of the money the spendings and the earning chief financial officer finance is all about money it deals with money it deals with how to manage money. Marketing is all about advertising, making sure people are aware of the products that you're building, and sales is all about selling it to customer, getting the money on what you sell, and employees are there to run the company in all of these functions, but also very importantly, in building the products. The company has employees who are working together uh, in, in unison, in, in, in unity, to kind of build things for the company, okay? So those are the different roles. Now we're going to switch gears and talk about teamwork. So now that you know about all of this as a, as a company, what all is there, you're going to form teams. And, and I hope by now you've already formed teams. And a, and a team is a group of people, depending on the strength of the session that we're doing. It's always good to have a team of anything between four to five people. Um, if it's only two people, it's a slightly difficult one because then you have only smaller ideas or only too few an ideas to bounce back and forth um, i would say minimum of three to four but a maximum of five if you form the team i want to give you some ideas about how to build make the teamwork really uh, go well number one thing be inclusive include everyone in your team in a discussion give everyone a chance to ta uh, talk and ask for input i know there will be personalities will be quiet There'll be personalities who will talk more or be more vocal. So be inclusive. Inclusion is very important. So that you give a chance for everyone to speak and also seek and ask for input. Second one is respect all your teammates. Get all of their comments and ideas. Don't retaliate. Don't be negative about somebody's ideas or don't shut off somebody's ideas. In the initial forming stages of the team, it's always good to hear every idea and respect every teammate. It's also good to have that all throughout, but at the beginning it's even more important because then it allows you to gel well as a team. Ask a lot of questions and be very cordial. And when you ask questions, use comments like, how will we do it? Use a lot of the we so that you're inclusive about everyone in your team. Can we really build it? This is about somebody may have an idea saying something really grand you might want to ask, hey, is it really possible for us to do it? Maybe we should tone it down. Does someone need what we want to build? Meaning that's a very important question to ask. Hey, let's go build something. Do you really think somebody needs it? Will they really buy it? Do you really think they will pay money for it? Ask that questions because sometimes our ideas, we get too biased. 
we get too uh, attached to our ideas so we like it so much to a point we don't see the practical aspect of it so it's good to ask always in the group does someone need it um, and will they buy it what help do we need you know you're going to be a team of three maybe four or five but you may need help you may need help from the mentors the teachers maybe your family some friends some other networking aspect so write down what all help do you need beyond this group of five um, and then as you deliberate as you discuss more you want to ask this can we think this one more time before we decide just think if there are anything that's a, a risk or a negative pros and cons one more time before decide and the reason why you want to give that one more time is because you don't want to rush and make a decision as you think about ideas and products and uh, when you want to re retort or ask a question for an idea somebody but make it very cordial it's always good to start by saying hey that's a nice idea can you tell me a little bit more about it even if the idea is very raw and you didn't understand it you want to give a chance for the individual to explain before shutting them off so it's always good to ask can you explain a little bit more some cues some uh, tips as you form the team what you can use as terminology and way of conducting yourself and the last thing is very important work as one team remember at the beginning of starting the company when you go through this journey and we will do this you may think that somebody may not be important for your team but as you get more and more to building marketing and selling you will realize every individual is important in your team so work as one team it does not matter whose idea it is at the end of the day your company should succeed it's not an individual's idea and it, it becomes a team idea once you take it and you add more structure to the idea the idea may be very raw when somebody brings it up but as you discuss more it will evolve then it becomes a team idea so make sure you embrace it as a team's idea and debate in a healthy manner to see if a suggestion or an idea is good that's why you need to work as one team so these are very important aspects of teamwork don't uh, you know push somebody's idea out or don't be too negative about somebody's idea be uh, polite but ask the hard questions do you know things like hey is it really worth building this is this a good idea i'm not sure can we discuss a little bit more can we ask somebody else so try to use those critical comments but in a healthy manner such that you're still working as a team remember only as a team you're going to win in the entrepreneurship journey there is no entrepreneur who is done and built a company just by himself or herself with nobody else right so that's important so few points on the teamwork now as you form teams this is important and and i assume that you form teams but let's take for example that you haven't yet and you are still debating who should be in your team or who all should be part of a team team will have different talent and strengths from different team members so you want to respect all of them you want to learn to listen to all their views and inputs from everyone as a team the first activity that you want to do if you're formed already is get familiar with each one of them you may be friends you may already know them which is good but there may be others one or two people in the team that may not know everyone so take a little bit of time to know each individual um, maybe as just as an initial uh, uh, brainstorming as you think of ideas of what you want to do in your company as you form the team is give each member a chance to bring up a couple of ideas two ideas for a product or a service that they want to build for the company let each one have a chance and let everyone get a turn to tell or talk about their two ideas make sure all of you are listening don't interrupt let them finish the idea then ask a question uh, to understand the idea better uh, avoid being judgmental about an idea at this stage as you ask everyone in your team let's say if you're a team of five each one brings two ideas that's 10 ideas don't yet discard an idea saying it's a bad, a bad idea or a good idea right discard or overly jump on an idea just listen right um, wait for time to judge and sometimes out of the 10 ideas two or three may be overlapping which is good so wait for judging um, collect those 10 to 12 ideas um, and and, and make sure that you've made a list of them write it down um, and as you ideate be bold to think and share ideas that you have in mind right now have no filters right we will go through how to you know take an idea from a very raw stage make it better 
so that it becomes a viable uh, business of sorts. So that's uh, the first activity. So I think uh, uh, you know if you're doing this virtually or uh, in person, you might want to take a break, uh, do a couple of things about hey how teams are formed. Maybe you form the teams, then sit down, introduce yourselves as a small group, then write down two ideas that you can discuss and share with your teams. Okay. And this is a good uh, time to pause and do this activity. Now, before you get too further in the ideation, maybe there's something, few more things that I want to cover. When thinking of ideas, um, you want to create a list of needs. Um, when I say list of needs, what it means is, what are some of the things that I will need, my team members will need, as in I will buy or my team members might buy, right? Pay money for it. What are our needs like? It could be, you know, what are our basic needs? I need clothes, I need food, I need a house, I need books, I need computers, I need to go to school, um, I need to go out to eat. Um, maybe there are other needs. Maybe there are things like I need to have this transportation or I have this problem that I need to solve when, I, when I'm in the house, when I'm outside. So create a list of needs, not only your needs, but also what a community or your neighborhood also needs. Sometimes your neighbors might say, hey, I have this problem, I wish I could buy this or I could do this. Um, so write a list of those. And, and also think about what your school needs because you spend a lot of time with your friends at your home and in school. These are three sets of people, and of course you yourself being an individual, these are three sets of people that already have needs for buying things, which again could become a source of idea for building products. So create a list of needs then look at the talent within your team. Just look at what talent is available in your team. Um, talent, not only as you individual, some of you may be good at writing, some of you may be very good in science, some of you may be good in crafts, some of you may be good at, I don't know, cooking, some of you may be very good at uh, uh, music or sport, whatever, right? Write the talent available in the team, but also extend the talent to what talent your parents or grandparents or your close relatives may have because you could tap into that talent as well as we go through the entrepreneurship and then make a list of those talent right what are the talents available and then ask the question can we build something using the talent that we have to meet the needs that we listed down needs are things that i want my friends want my neighborhood wants my community wants my school wants or the places that i go to wants for example, if you're going to an off school, outside of school tuition or tutoring, and you don't have great benches then, or a chairs, the need could be I need chairs. Or there isn't a great whiteboard, the need could be a whiteboard. Or when you come home and you see your mom struggling with a particular aspect in, in the house or in her work, um, that could be a need. So you have your needs and then you have your talent. Now ask the question, is there a mapping? And remember, the talent need not be restricted only to your talent, your team's talent, but also your network of people, your parents, relatives, um, and, and others that you, you know of. They could have some talent that could help you with the, with the needs. People normally buy products that meet a need that they have. It's very difficult to sell a product for which people don't have a need, but they do buy. For example, Facebook was never a need or Instagram was never a need. 10 years ago or 20 years ago, but when the product came, they liked it, they used it. Those are good examples. But typically, people go to a shop with wanting something that they want to buy because they have a need for it at home or in their lives. So it's typically easy to you know, convince someone to buy something if they have a need. So as you think about ideas, keep these in mind. And as you brainstorm about ideas, look for simple problems to solve because remember, as we go through this entrepreneurship program, you're not going to be only doing theoretical work. You're actually going to have ideas. You're going to build products. You're going to market and sell them, and you're going to have a profit and loss. You're going to experience all of the aspects that we talked about in the company, all of the roles, and you will do it by building products. Okay, so look for simple problems that is a need, that you can do something about it, 
and make money does it solve a need that someone has can you build a solution can you build a product it may be a need uh, someone might say i need a very cheap motor vehicle to go through the traffic meaning okay that's a great need but does your team have the ability to build that product in a short window of 3 months right so take a uh, look at what what you can do there and and the last one as you brainstorm ask the question can someone buy it will they pay money for it right these are some things to keep in mind when you brainstorm now this is an important uh, uh, chart that i use we will come back to it more than once there is the need which i talked to you about there is a talent which you your team and your extended team which is people you know have talent and then there is ideas that you will come up with the good ideas the products that you have to build uh should be at the intersection of these three if you have an idea where there is no need for it like somewhere here you know this is idea that has a need but you don't have a talent to build it you're going to struggle there is a great need and you have the talent but you haven't come up with an idea to build the product you may build the wrong product for example if somebody said i needed a a motor vehicle to go uh, in this traffic like i said you may have the talent and there is a need but if you ended up building a boat and not an automobile that's a bad idea you may have a good idea you may have the talent but if there is no need then you won't be able to sell the product so it's important that somewhere along it kind of sort of fits in this nice space which is a intersection of the three there may not be a perfect intersection don't worry about it sometimes a small intersection is still good but try to build those products where there is a need you have some talent to build it and you have the right ideas products to build it lot of times if you have the need and talent going together ideas can be framed fairly well even if the first time of the product is not a greatest of ideas you might be able to quickly fix it and do it so these two are very important the need and talent okay and i'm going to give you some examples in the past sessions that we ran so that you get a feel for what are this interest talent and need how do they come together so there was uh, there was a team that had music and theater as their talent now of course is there an idea yeah, people pay for good music they go to watch some good shows on theater um and so they could come up with the right product so since it's a small team they decided to do short mil- films and plays around a specific rural theme and make a digitize that version and sell that product either as cds or usb sticks to people um part of that also they composed and sang local language songs for birthdays weddings and anniversaries which was personalized and they sold that and they you know they basically got inputs for hey this person has a a birthday who is this person what what are their interests what do they like and they composed their own music that was personalized and they said hey i'll give you the song pay me x rupees and you can use it for your daughter's birthday and the way they asked the question was tell me about your daughter how old she is what is her interest what does she like and then based on that they composed a song and they got money for it that's again a, a, an example of interest and talent and a need similarly on the farm and nature there was some group of students who really wanted to do farming they did their own manure um built and sold the bags of manure from um from city dwellers these were urban uh, uh, rural school students that did this manure stuff um and and they had seeds uh, they created uh, name tags for plants and sign boards for farms which is kind of interesting language and books um short stories writing poems publishing books um they had uh, and an application for translating words of course there are applications already there you may find something unique that you want to do arts and crafts this is another famous one lot of students got together made crafts sold them uh, used some unique things like natural colors and paints and science interested student had many different ideas electronic kits uh, they had uh, electric toys and then they had built kits that can be used in school labs for experiments um they had toys showing how simple machines work that can be used in school labs uh they created leaf albums um that could be classified and used in science labs um there were others where they were using phone apps for uh, uh tracking health parameters for senior citizens uh they built some sensors so that you could do a uh, test uh, 
the amount of soil in the in in your pot or in your garden so that you don't over water or dehydrate the plants baby monitors pet monitors things like that interesting ideas but they kept the problem simple and small you get too grand it becomes too difficult to build and you can't build too many of them you want to build a few number of these products so that you can sell right you can't just build one and sell one you want to build a few number again it depends on the idea so keep those in mind this is just to give you an, uh, uh, a feel for how interest and talent come together to meet a need and what kind of ideas can come out of that to build a product there are some more ideas this kind of taps into the talent and skills of your family and friends maybe your parents grandparents maybe they're good at something and you are the entrepreneur that takes advantage of that skill to build some products maybe talents of teachers maybe you you tell your teacher hey let me build a digital platform for you to give your lectures um, online maybe uh, for students who missed a class for a period of time and that could be a service i don't know that could be an idea could be products for your school like i said in the previous one there were some students who built kits that can go into the school lab and the school purchased that lab kit uh, look at what school needs um, for your neighbors and communities um, so these are some other going a little bit more broader in terms of those ideas i hope this gives you some feel for now that you form teams um, you know who they are you know the talent of every team member you've done some early brainstorming of those 10 ideas now spend some more time with this knowledge how you can fine tune okay um you know this is again summarizing how you map your talent to the ideas make a list of all the talent in the team right create ideas where talent from the team can really be used you really want to use your team's talent not just one individual in the team's um, uh, talent to be used but everybody in the team as much as you can if there are multiple talents in the team different talents use ideas where more than one of those talent can be used to build a product don't build products for each talent try to combine them like if you have somebody who can paint or well, write a story don't make a, some paintings and some story books try to combine them and i'll give some ideas on how to do that use all the talent to come up with unified product ideas that makes it more fun that makes it more compelling uh, makes your product also unique okay so i'll give you an, uh, a few examples how the talent got together to come up with this you know combined product ideas so like i said make a list of all talent in your team if what everybody has have some ideas where all talent can be used don't make products for each individual talent but a combination of it now that sounds theoretical i'm going to give you some examples from the previous batches in parallel venture how they did it so that you will get an understanding this is an example you know there are some team members here you can see you can see on the left there are six people their talent was very broad was they, they did art dance craft sports drawing story writing and they had variety of products that they want to do they want to do picture frame food catering service art painting paint work writing story books but if you can if you notice each one of them is a product for one talent but when they combined it together the final idea that they worked on of course we helped them as mentors in tala venture is they wrote a story book where the story line had many food dishes that came in the story and the recipe was called out at the end of the book the story also had pictorial representation of characters and certain narratives so they also took advantage of their painting and drawing and art capability so this is where a combination of art storytelling and uh, um you know cooking culinary interest and talent got together to form a unique idea think of this they wrote a novel and that novel storyline had many dish names food item names that came in there which were very unique food items and there was in the narrative pictorial representation of the characters and things like that at the end of the book they had a glossary and a recipe section of every dish that was called out in the storyline kind of a unique thing so rather than give a recipe book which is kind of boring or a fiction or separate art they combine that together that was really neat here is another example this team had you know they had they wanted to make jewelry craft and they wanted to do theater work they wanted to do storytelling so you know in they had 
they said they want to do place design jewelry crafts and create some more product ideas but the final idea which combined unified that they created play and drama series they used jewelry designed by them in the play and then when they bought the cd people could also buy the jewelry or 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 the uh, uh, you know fashion that they put in the play as products so as well as paintings that came in the play as products at the end of it so you know it may not be a perfect match but there was a nice way to bring the skill together so they sold the cd they sold the jewelry that came in the play in the theater as well as the paintings and the fashion clothing that they did so they kind of brought all of that together so that's another example of how the combination of talent ended up making a unified idea as a product rather than multiple individual products uh, this is the last one which uh, had uh, various ideas of um, jewelry making and craft again combine that together they had clay craft as a talent on the team as well as designing jewelry and making some handicrafts and they built it all together and they started to make clay based jewelry also um, which is kind of interesting which is more had a little bit more earthy touch to it and 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 was unique in the sense that you couldn't you couldn't find it uh, very easily in any uh, store per se so again uh, they used clay to make craft and they made clay and combined jewelry and designing together got something out of that one so those are some examples again talent need talent is what your team has need is what people will uh, people have that they will pay money to buy and ideas should be something that meets the need combines all the talent in your team to come up with a unified product when you make that unification more than often it becomes a unique idea which is really valuable okay so just moving on um, when you have an idea just make sure that there is a description of the idea few things that you want to keep in mind is what problem are you solving what need are you meeting very important to answer that question what ideas you have to meet the need how are you solving it write it in a couple of simple lines what products are you planning to build to meet that need list those products what are its benefits and features and who are your buyers you know you should always keep in mind who your potential customers are there are various kind of products that you may build is it going to go for a specific category like a household person maybe a school a student a teacher maybe people who are going to work is it for the office is it for specific personalities is it for avid readers book lovers is it home decor create that who are your target buyers so you as you formulate your idea think a little bit more about what need is it going to meet what are the unique things that are there in your product for meeting that need and who are your potential buyers this helps you think a little bit more hard to fine tune your ideas and then um, I, I want to leave you with the start where success comes from being smart you may have heard of the smart acronym specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound what this means in entrepreneurship is particularly as you're learning your first experience of entrepreneurship be specific be very clear about what you want to build and why you want to build it has to be very clear right measurable how many are you going to build how many of these products right what is the cost of building it what's going to be the price we'll teach you all of this but we'll keep this in mind that we'll make it very specific very measurable achievable very important this is your first time small group of five maybe you'll get some help from surrounding uh, folks like your family and friends and others but make sure you can actually build these products you don't want to take an idea that's too big too large so that you spend all the time doing one of it and it doesn't come out right and in the end you've used up the money but you don't have a product or you used the money you built one or two but it's not good quality you used all the money and you just built one you want to make sure that you can actually build it right so make sure it's achievable so simplifying it is okay you don't want to build something too grand but something that's achievable that you can do as a team it has to be relevant it has to meet the need for somebody who will buy it has to be time bound we're going to do this program in 50 hours maybe spread over two three months start to finish so make sure it's time bound right so smart is very important to be successful in entrepreneurship okay 
keep that in mind okay with that we're going to stop today's session or this session in the next session we'll talk about company logos and motos and other aspect great time for you to spend who identifying who your team members are sitting down with them learning and understanding who they are introduction couple of ideas from each one of them very early raw stage ideas respecting being inclusive not being judgmental about the ideas remember the three circles need talent idea when they intersect you have products so always ask will people buy it is there a need for it what talent do i have in my team can i combine all the talent in my team and build unified products and can i make sure that the idea is something that i can really achieve use the smart principle just start to think about it don't have to uh, worry about it right now do a lot of writing do a lot of discussion this will help you and as we go along we'll go to the next phase with that we'll meet you in the next session thank you